HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with everything you need to know about Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, we visit a Hopkinton-themed photo contest at the Center for the Arts, bring you up to date with Hiller's Sports, we'll show you magician Richard Potter and the latest Hopkinton real estate report. But first, the Elementary School Building Committee has narrowed down the site options for the new school. The Hopkinton Elementary School Building Committee on February 4th voted unanimously to approve a short list of site alternatives for further evaluation. As part of the Center School Feasibility Study, funding for which was approved by town meeting in May 2013, the committee has been evaluating 11 alternatives at four locations. Four site alternatives will be evaluated in the coming months and they include Alternative 1C plus 25 Ash Street, consists of new construction on town-owned property behind the existing center school, augmented by abutting 25 Ash Street with preservation of the front of existing center school building. The Irvine property, 20 plus acres located on Hayden Row, just south of Hopkinton Parks and recreation land at EMC Park. Tadaro property, option 4A, 20 plus acres, with access from 147 Hayden Row Street abutting the Irvine property to the north, adjacent to Waterfresh Farm, and abutting five acres of town-owned property on the south. The committee's decision followed extensive deliberations and discussion over several meetings, including input from two community workshops and consideration of expert advice from town and school district professional staff, Compass Project Management, and Drummy Roseanne Anderson Architects. The ESPC used the site evaluation matrix to narrow the list down to four options they are going to investigate more closely. The site evaluation matrix considers many different factors of the sites, such as the disruption to education during construction, the construction impact to neighbors, and the after construction effect on traffic, as well as many other categories. The four options that are going to be more evaluated, 1C plus 25 ash would be just over 3 million. The two options on the Irvine property, 3A and 3B, would be just above 2 million. And the option on the Tadaro site would be just over 2.5 million. For more information, you can go to Center School project.com. Be on the lookout for all elementary school building committee meetings airing on HCAM. And to stay up to date with the progress of the new school, check out our website, hcam.tv. 2014 was a busy year for home sales in Hopkinton. With the trends from last year, here is Kathleen Buckley with the Real Estate Report. Hello. I'm Kathleen Buckley here with your Real Estate Market Report for Single Family Homes in Hopkinton, Massachusetts. All of the data that we'll be looking at today comes from our Regional Multiple Listing Service MLS PIN. So the volume of home sales, first of all, for the year in 2014. Single Family Homes, we had a total of 208 homes sold and the median sale price of those homes was $582,433, up from last year. And the average days it took to get an offer on those homes came in at 52. So we had more home sales compared to 2013, up 12% in fact. The median sale price was up 5%, and the days to offer remained exactly the same. All good news for home sellers going forward. You can see here that 2014 is one of only four years in the past 11 years that we had volume over 200 sales. Our median sale price is going back toward the peak of 2006, and the market time is really quite low. All bodes well for sellers in 2015. As far as the 
highest selling home and the most affordable home in Hopkinton. Let's take a look at those two. First of all, the most affordable home, 79 Hayward Street near Lake Maspinock. It sold for $125,000. For that, uh, the new owner has 456 square feet of living space in a home built in 1950 with one bedroom and one full bath. For the people who need a little bit more square footage, 10 Westcott Drive on the shores of Lake Whitehall in town was built in 2004, came on the market in July of 2012 for a price of $3.1 million and then sold in November of this year finally for $2,050,000. If you are in the market to buy or sell in 2015, please contact your local real estate professional. I'm Kathleen Buckley. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Kathleen. The Hopkinton Center for the Arts hosted a Hopkinton-themed photo contest in honor of Hopkinton's 300th anniversary. Kelsey Simonson caught up with artistic director Chris Waldman and 300th anniversary committee volunteer Anne Matina, who talked about the contest. Hi, I'm Chris Waldman from the Hopkinton Center for the Arts. We're here at the 300th anniversary celebration uh, photography show. And um, we were invited by the 300th anniversary committee to participate in this show. Um, the kickoff weekend is this one, and so we are just getting ready to have our opening reception right now. Um, this is a photography show where we invited everybody who wanted to participate to do so. So it's uh, professional photographers, some people who have never entered a, an art show, um, some people who found some amazing photographs in their attic, um, and just all sorts of memorabilia and beautiful things to celebrate Hopkinson's anniversary. Um, we did ask two judges to take a look at the artwork and judge for prizes, which I will be announcing later. And um, in the meantime, it's just kind of a fun exhibit for uh, people to get to know one another and get to know the center that haven't ever been here. Uh, the 300th anniversary invited the HCA to um, sponsor this particular show, um, focusing on the motto of the 300th anniversary based on the past, present, and future of the town. And we've had over 60 submissions for the show, and as Chris mentioned, they're from both professional and amateur pho uh, photographers alike, as well as fam old family photos have been entered into the exhibit, and it's fabulous, and we encourage everybody to come on out and see the wonderful photographs that are here. They will be here until February 26th. And we are open weekdays from 11 to 5, and if you can't make it during those hours, please give me a ring, and I'm happy to meet you at some other point and arrange a viewing. Coming up next on HCAM News, we will show you the results of the Center for the Arts Hopkinton-themed photo contest, get you caught up with Hiller Sports, and meet magician Richard Potter. A lot more ahead, so don't go anywhere. Thanks to the HEF, HPTA, at 300th Anniversary Committee, we're bringing a program forward to honor alumni of Hopkinton High School. We're looking for nominations, and the criteria include graduated from the high school at least 10 years ago, demonstrated a high level of achievement, and made significant contributions to work, home, community, or volunteer efforts, and exhibited leadership, character, and service. Please visit our website to participating in nominating your HHS Welcome grant. back to HCAM News. A lot of great photos of our town are on display throughout the end of February at the Center for the Arts. During Hockington's 300th anniversary kickoff weekend, a few of the photographers were rewarded during the Hockington themed photo contest. Thank you all for coming. I'm Chris Waldman. I'm the artistic director of the Hockington Center for the Arts. Um, we're thrilled to be hosting this show. Um, Ann Matina from the 300th Anniversary Celebration Committee uh, came to us last fall uh, with this wonderful idea of hosting a show here that spoke to Hopkinson's uh, past, present, and future. So we invited um, Hopkintonians and basically anybody who wanted to participate in this show to submit images that um, spoke to this theme. 
and we got quite a few professional photographers and some amateur photographers, some people who never even used a camera before, some people who went through their attics and found really cool old stuff in there. Um, so I think it's this wonderful combination of things that speaks to Hopkinton. Um, I invited two judges, uh, Carolyn Latorell and Lynn Damianos, to judge the show. And um, as you can imagine, it was a challenge because there's such a wonderful variety of work. Um, but they came up with three top prizes, and then they decided that uh, three honorable mentions uh, were worth giving out as well. So here goes. Um, for honorable mention, uh, Steps to Adventure by Anne Newberry. On Your Marks by Tom Sloan, which is in the first room on the left. Honorable mention also goes to Goat Farm by Colleen Roy. <laughs> Third prize goes to Family by Kara Karatsa, football player. Second prize is Autumn Reverie by Gerard Hottleman. Thank you. First prize is Through the Stone, HCA at Sunset. So my name is Tom Sloan, and uh, the uh, piece that I submitted that uh, won was uh, Through the Stone at uh, HCA at Sunset. And it's a picture that I took uh, after a blizzard uh, two years ago, uh, and I came over to the to the HCA and and just took the shot through the through the snow. And what inspired you? What made you want to take that picture? I always liked the uh, the composition and the angles of the stone and how they mirrored the angles of the rooftops. For more information on the photo contest or to arrange a viewing of the gallery, check out hopartscenter.org. As we near the end of the winter sports season and head into the postseason, the Hillers once again pulled off a couple of Tri-Valley League championships. But first, we have highlights from a crucial girls basketball matchup with their TVL rival, the Holliston Panthers. On Friday, January 30th, the Lady Hillers welcomed in TVL rival the Holliston Panthers. Emma Lacasia with a fantastic steal led to the Hillers' first field goal of the game. On this possession, the Hillers did what they do best. Shake off the defense and find Holly Adams down low. Off the boards and in 4-2, Hillers take the 14-6 lead. Second quarter, Caitlin West chips in with a three to make it 22-8 Hillers. Following possession, Julia Canistrari steals it away and puts it off the boards, and it's 24 to 8 Hillers. Third quarter, missed three ball by Canistrari. Holly Adams says, Don't worry, I got you. Off the boards and in 4 2, 51 to 33 Hillers at this point. The Hillers never looked back as they took the victory over the Holliston Panthers, 69 to 44. Holly Adams racked up 17 points. Kylie Lorenzen for Holliston led the way with 19. Julia Canistrari also chipped in with 13 points for the Hillers in a big victory. And then on Wednesday, February 4th, Bellingham beat the Lady Hillers 51-42. Hopkinton 7-6, three wins away from a playoff berth. On Friday, January 30th, the boys basketball team beat Holliston 92-65. And then on Wednesday, February 4th, they took down Bellingham 49-34. The Hillers are 8-7 on the season, two more wins, and you're in. On Saturday, January 31st, in hockey, the Hillers lost to Dover Sherborne 4-1 on Wednesday, February 4th, a tough loss to Medfield, 7-0. And then on Thursday, February 5th, Medway beat Hopkinton 3-0. On Sunday, February 1st, Hopkinton swimming and diving won their fifth straight TVL title, the relay was won by Emily Way, Rachel Zale, Olivia Handrahan, and Bridget Coffey at a time of 157.10. Olivia Handrahan also won the girls 50 freestyle with a score of 25.91. Alyssa Anberg is TVL diving champion. She scored a 258.75. Bridget Coffey 
won the 110 yard backstroke at a time of 110.41. And on the boys' side, Andrew Madigan won the 100 yard backstroke with a time of 104.68. The MIAA also announced Hopkinton Swim and Dive not only won the TVL championship but displayed great sportsmanship throughout the season and will be rewarded by the Massachusetts Interscholastic Athletic Association with the Swimming Sportsmanship Award. In addition to the New England Patriots winning the Super Bowl Sunday, February 1st, Hopkinton had another victory to celebrate as the Hopkinton Hillers girls track team took home the TVL championship. The girls track team faced their first loss in nine years this season to the Norton Lancers, but they would have revenge. Norton was favored in about half of all the individual events, but the Hillers prevailed in the underdog role. Despite not winning a single event, the Hopkinton Hillers racked up 92 points to claim first place. The Norton Lancers had 83. And hurdles, Norton's Cassidy Campbell came in first, with a score of 8.95, the Hillers responded with Nicole Belial in second, 9.26, Evelyn Monks in third, 9.56, and Allison Walsh in fourth with 9.70. Taylor Velasquez also came up with key points in the Hillers TVL championship victory. On the boys' side, Norton took down Hopkinton 101 to 63. Be sure to check out HCAM.TV or our Facebook and Twitter pages to stay up to date with Hiller Sports. The kickoff weekend to Hopkinton's 300th anniversary was a magical time for the town. The Hopkinton Library added a little more magic as they hosted magician Richard Potter. Many were in attendance as the Hopkinton Library hosted Robert Olson, otherwise known as the great magician Richard Potter, on the library's 120th anniversary celebration. Take out what you find. Is there not a box within the box? <laughs> I will not touch it. Take the key, sir. Hold it. Take the key. Is that locked, gentle lady? Yes. I will not touch it. Place the key within, sir. Turn the lock all the way. You'll hear it unlock. Keep turning, keep turning, keep turning. There you go. Raise the lid. Graham, you want to open it? What do you choose inside the second box? What is it? Hold it up and show them. There indeed. Back again. I thank you, Graham. I got a magic set when I was about eight years old and I stuck with it, much to my parents' full embarrassment, so I've been doing the Richard Potter show for almost 40 years. Do you know where this trash came Started at Sturbridge Village like 40 years ago and I've been doing it all over the country ever since. Oh, wow. Um, is there uh, certain areas you're in more or is it uh, just all around? Now, all over the country. I've been out to California, up to Canada, over to England. Uh, Mr. Potter's been very good to me. He's been able to make a decent living without having to work hard. Is this your first time in Hopkinton? No, I was here a few years ago doing research on Potter. I mean, Potter was born in Hopkinton around 1783, and I'm constantly looking for more information on where he came from, what he did. It is very hard to find the original history of an entertainer. They leave great paper trails. So you can look at their ads, they tell you what the tricks are done. But to find out who he was as an individual, he ran a tavern for a while in a of place. That's the mystery. So we have no idea about his personal life, but he's a character that I've been studying for 40 years, and he's been very nice to me. Well, now do you have a, like a favorite trick that you do? The ribbon trick. The, uh, the ribbon trick is my favorite, and it, it shows up in a book published in London in 1772, written by Henry Dean. And even magicians of the modern age look at the ribbon trick and say, how did you do that? The old tricks have to be good because an audience in the 18th or early 19th century, if they didn't have a good time, they would throw things at you. Fortunately today, nobody threw anything, so maybe that's a measure of what I did. Yeah, if, if they look up Robert Olson or if they contact me through Old Sturbridge Village, that's where I do most of my work at. So if they just contact Old Sturbridge Village and ask for information on the magician, they'll pass it on to me. Hold it up and show that. Hold the bottle up, young lady. Is that most amazing? While she waves a stick, one card dances, young lady. Did you happen to take a knife of hearts? Yes. Yes, she did an dance to the bow, young lady. 
Be on the lookout for the full Richard Potter Magic Show at the library airing on HCAM. Speaking of what's airing on HCAM, our promotions coordinator, Courtney, is here to tell you what else you can expect on the HCAM channels with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. In a new Hopkinton coffee break tonight at 8 p.m., Joelle Crosby discusses everything from pets to her cosmetology business. If you have the most delicate skin, like Connie here, <laughs> they know they have the bio biotechnology where they can just extract those that whatever it is out of the ingredient mm -hmm. and put it in the product. On Monday, February 16th at 7 p.m., previous MLK Day Song Circle participants share their hopes and wishes for peace in honor of Martin Luther King. All people are deserving of a rule of law founded on love. On Tuesday, February 17th at 6.30 p.m., Senator Karen Spilka shares information on the new commercial driver's license certification process. And at 7 p.m., Bruce Carlin will host a live discussion on HCAM TV and answer questions on 203 Pond Street to inform residents of everything they need to know ahead of town meeting. Email questions to live at hcam.tv or call 508-625 1640 during the program. In a new ESBC update on Wednesday, February 18th at 7 p.m., Rob Nickerson and Jim Barrett discuss the remaining school site options and the upcoming public forum. In All About Hopkinton at 8 p.m., Superintendent Kathy McLeod and School Resources Officer Phil Powers discuss the ALICE program and how it is being implemented in the schools. As of right now, the traditional lockdown is um, just one step that we have, but with this enhanced lockdown, it gives the staff member, the teacher, uh, more choices. On HCAM Ed, we bring you Pirates from Grammar Island. Join Captain Kama and his crew as they search the seas for grammatical gold. We also bring you the ice hockey game versus Milford, and you can check hcam.tv slash education to find out when these programs will air. Would you like to have the HCAM Insider delivered to you every week? Then send me an email at Courtney at hcam.tv. And please check out HCAM TV on Comcast Channel 8 or Verizon Channel 30, and HCAM Ed on Comcast Channel 96 and Verizon Channel 31. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. That will wrap up this edition of HCAM News. Be sure to check our website, hcam.tv, or find us on Facebook to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton, including upcoming local events. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care and go Hillers. Open door.
风。